Hi, let's um, give you a brief introduction on how to use the, um, the cystic timer. Okay, so we're going to use the cystic timer, and we're going to use it to measure elapsed time. Basically, what it is is a counter, and that means it counts. Now, it happens to be a down counter, and it happens to be 24 bits wide. So we're, this counter, uh, which has got the name current, right? That's the name of this counter, current, is a 24-bit number uh, which will count down, and it will count down on the bus cycle. So in this lab, it'll count down every 12.5 nanoseconds, okay? Now what it does uh, is we're going to set it up so it counts from F, 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 six of them, six Fs, okay? And then 12.5 nanoseconds later, it'll count down again, zero, zero, F, 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 E, Okay, and then D, C, B, A. And then eventually, it'll get down to uh, a small numbers, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And after it gets to 0, it'll reload back again to F, F, F. And this happens over and over and over again. You don't have to run your software. Uh, this will happen automatically in hardware. So Cystic is a counter that automatically decrements every 12.5 nanoseconds. And when it gets to zero, it'll reload back up to what we call this reload value. In our case, that reload value is going to be six Fs. Okay, so uh, these are the registers. Um, the initialization is pretty simple. Uh, basically, we're going to store into this reload value that six uh, F constant. We're going to store into there that constant. We're going to set this bit uh, so that it counts with the bus clock. We're going to set the enable bit so that it runs. Uh, and that's pretty much it. You're going to see uh, us writing to this reload value and writing a 5 into this register. Now when we get the later labs, we'll turn on the interrupts. Uh, but in this particular lab, we're going to set this uh, in a interrupt enable bit to a zero. So there's our five that you'll see that we write in order to initialize it. All right. Okay, so here's our initialization. You can find this in the book. You're going to copy paste it into your lab in the appropriate spot. But let me just zoom into the two things you have to understand. First of all, the reload value is going to be six Fs. Okay, so that will specify the value it reloads to after it goes uh, one, two, one, zero, and then after the zero, it'll switch over to six Fs. One, two, three, four, five, six, okay? The second thing is we want to write a five into the control register, and that will enable the device and set the bus clock as the source of the counting. All right, that's about it. Now we're going to use it. Now in lab four, we're going to use it in this way. If you zoom into, uh, think about two pieces of code, right? Think about this code and think about that code. All right, so let's start with this one. Uh, we're going to assume we're going to run this first. Okay? And somewhere in RAM, uh, we're going to have a variable. All righty, let's call it first. You with me? All right, this is a 32-bit variable. Uh, we're going to uh, create it. And when I read the current, Okay, right here, I'm reading the current. Uh, what that will give me is a 24-bit number, which will specify the current time. Uh, so let me just pick a number, okay? And it's going to store that number into this. So let's just assume, uh, pick a number, let's make it 1,000. All right, 1,000, okay? Uh, there will be 1,000, uh, which will represent the time in 12.5 nanosecond units that this code executed. You can see it's only four instructions long. And then sometimes later, okay, second, sometimes later, we'll execute this code, okay, which will read the counter again, right? We're gonna read the counter again, the same code. Uh, this time what I'm gonna do is just leave it here in R1, okay? And let me assume that when I read it this second time, uh, I get the number 750. 
Again, it's a down counter, right? So it's going to count down 1,999, 198, etc. Okay. Um, and then I will go back and read uh, read the previous value of first, and that'll be here in R3, right there. Okay, so I'll read R3 with the previous value. That will be of the 1,000. And then when I subtract it, okay, I'm going to get the number 250. And that 250 will represent 250, of course, times 12.5 nanoseconds will be the elapsed time between running this first set of code and this second set of code. And so in this way, I can measure elapsed time essentially by reading the, the current value twice and then subtracting it. Now, the only complicated part is the fact that these were 24-bit measurements in a, stuck in a 32-bit register, and therefore the top four bits of this don't make any sense. So I will end, after I do the subtraction, I will end it off. And you can see that if I were to look at this fo following simple case, uh, let's do a second example where we measured it the first time and got the number two, okay? And then we measured it a second time. And uh, let's assume it counted from two to one, one to zero, zero to zero, F, 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 F. That's a, one more. Let's count one more time. Uh, zero X F F F F F E. So I have a F F F F F E. And now when I subtract these two, you're going to see I'm going to get the following answer. I'm going to get an F F here. It's one two three four. Uh, okay, that's it. One two three four five four. Okay. Uh, these top bits are nonsensical, but when I end it, they'll go away. And there's my answer. Four counts, right? Went from two, it counted four times. Two to one, one to zero, zero to F, 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 and then to F, 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 E. Okay, four counts. So this sequence of operation allows you to measure the time, elapsed time between the execution of this code and the execution of that code. Now, all is fine as long as this total time is less than the total time that I tried to measure is less than 2 to the 24th uh, times 12.5 nanoseconds, which will be correct in this particular lab. Every time we measure a time difference between one time and the other, the total time will be less than this, uh, than this upper bound here. Okay. All right, well, uh, that's a, a brief introduction to how we're going to use cystic in this lab. There's lots more fun stuff about cystic that we'll use in the next lab, uh, but these are the only things you really need to know, know to do lab four. Good luck and have fun.